Ladies and gentlemen, I've got good news and I've got bad news. Let's start off with the bad news. We have found somebody that Magnus Carlsen cannot defeat at chess. Now the good news is, we have found a person that Magnus Carlsen, Magnus Carlsen can't beat this guy at chess, okay? This is going to make for some incredible content. All right, because for the last 15 years, Magnus Carlsen has been the best chess player in the world. Now, we don't really know that because you guys haven't actually ever lost a game against Magnus, right? Most of you are undefeated against Magnus, so we won't actually exactly know that for a fact, but we can safely assume, and Magnus beats everybody, including myself. But there is one man on the planet that Magnus Carlsen has not been able to defeat, even though the sample size is just two. And that person is Moldovan chess grandmaster Ivan Skitska. I played against Ivan last year in a tournament in New York. He cooked me, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the lack of cookery on behalf of Magnus when he plays against Ivan. And the most incredible thing about this is Ivan's rated 2,500. He is rated a ripe 2,509. He is nine points qualified for being Grandmaster. He only made Grandmaster about a year ago. Now I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he's in university. Maybe he's a construction worker, but it, it don't matter because this was a game played in August of 2022 and this was a game played November 15th, 2023. 15 months later, you think Magnus was training in the underground ready for his rematch. Now, uh, this game I actually covered in a video already because uh, I was making recaps of the Olympiad, but you might not remember this game. I'm going to give you a brief rundown of the game in 2022, and this is a game played in November 2023. Look at their ratings, by the way. 15 months later, Ivan down six ELO. He's been up and down. It's tough to be 2860. I mean, it is like impossible to gain ELO, and Magnus has lost, you know, 35 points in, in, in that many months, and it has less to do with him. It's a lot of rating deflation right now, a lot of good 25 and 2600s taking points from, from those guys. So <clears throat> this game is even more impressive because in this game, Magnus was white. So Ivan was playing against Magnus, uh, and Magnus played the King's Indian attack. Okay, not the defense, because he's playing with white. And in that game, he played in a very provocative way. He gambited a pawn in the center of the board, right? So he just straight up gave away a pawn. He didn't blunder that. And his idea was that, let's say, after something like this, he would then play like knight e5, and then when this knight went back, it would be kind of difficult for black to develop, and then Magnus might play knight c3, knight b5, and a5, knight a4, knight b6, etc. Yeah, Ivan just like didn't let him have any fun, and just played very solidly, and just, you know, developed his pieces. And in that game, Magnus pushed Ivan all the way back to h7, took some more space, and then Ivan played d4, and, and, and he just opened up the center of the board. Like showing no fear, no respect, and he played king h8 and put his knights promptly into Magnus' territory on b4, split the pawn, split the defense like they do in basketball, bishop d2, and then he went back, and Magnus maneuvered, preparing some advancements, but after a lot of shuffling and a lot of trading, he kicked out his knight, and a few moves later, he just created this barrier. And Magnus had an advantage, he was up 20 minutes during this game, he was putting some good pressure on Ivan, but when that moment happened, he just played f6. He, he was not afraid of fighting back against Magnus. Even though Magnus was setting up his cannons, he had his knights, right? He had his bishop, everything was looking good. But, uh, pawn takes, knight takes, and then Ivan played this nice move. Bishop takes knight, took the center, and Magnus had to blockade with his pawns, and we didn't really get anywhere. We got a bunch of trades, position got spicy, but here came Ivan crashing through, and uh, they repeated moves. Magnus did not try to play this for a win because if he did, if he played something like queen to g2, after the trade, uh, it, oh, that, well, that would have been nice. After this trade, it would have just been black playing for a win. So Magnus had a full board of pieces to work with, literally. Knights, bishops, eight pawns each, 20 moves into the game. He had all the pieces, all the resources to beat Ivan in 2022, and he failed to do so. So I was like, all right, well, you know, that was probably a one-hit wonder. 2,500 rated GM. I mean, he's, again, he's, he's, he's a very good player, but he literally just became a grandmaster. Magnus was born a grandmaster. Like, he arrived in a Norwegian hospital, and he had a title, okay? Like, they were holding him up for baby photos with his mom and dad. He was already, like, 1,600 then, okay? 
And he couldn't even, like, open his eyes yet to see light. Okay, I don't know if he had jaundice or anything. Like, that's when the babies are yellow, right? I think I was a yellow baby when I was born. They had to put me under a lamp. Fun facts with Gotham Chess when you watch my recaps. This was a game they played November. They played this game yesterday. Yesterday, November 15th. This is the European Team Championship, which is a tournament in Europe where they play in teams, and it's a championship. And that's, you know, that's how you know I'm a really smart guy. Now, Ivan in this game has white, so it's, it's harder to beat people with black. It's hard to beat people with black because white gets the first move. So white already, like, you know, if, if Magnus spent 10 hours preparing the Sicilian, which is this, yeah, like, right? So, like, you don't know what white is going to play. I mean, you do know with, with Ivan, he plays d4 and, and c4. Against me, he played e4 because the only opening I know is Karl Kahn, so I'm predictable. Um, but, you know, and then he plays c4. And, and now Magnus has to think. And Magnus does think. He, he actually, he's already down five minutes because he's trying to play in a provocative fashion, right? Like, he, he's playing the King's Indian defense, which is hardly seen. Like, if you go to a 27 and 2800 ELO chess tournament, nobody's going to play g6. Because modern-day computers have made it so difficult for Black to play the King's Indian defense. Back in the day, Garrett Kasparov spammed this opening. Like, like an Overwatch character. I mean, literally, he just played ball. All right? That was like what it was. He, 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 he was Hamster. He was Hammond. And he was just destroying everybody. That was a ball main, by the way, in, uh, in Overwatch. Knight c3, bishop g7, King's Indian defense. And Ivan plays the system h3, bishop e3. It's called the Markogonov variation. Um, there are many lines here. There is the four pawns attack, there is the classical, there is bishop e2, bishop e3, the double bishop setup. h3, bishop e3 is a very nice setup. And I actually, this was one of my main weapons against the King's Indian defense. I just have to get Magnus into a classical tournament and then I have to play, uh, yeah, I have to make sure he plays this opening. And basically the idea is to do something like this and then black normally tries to put a knight on c5 while preventing you from playing b4, and you, you play like this. That's what, you, that's what you try to do with white. You go for an attack. You play knight e2, knight g3, not knight f3, and then you advance your pawns. Magnus plays very provocative, knight c6. Knight c6, very provocative move. Why? Because black is basically saying, I am not afraid of your knights in the center. Come attack me, right? Ivan thinks for a bit, plays d5. Principled move. If he was afraid of jumping in, like, you know, fighters are afraid of jumping in against good counter punchers. Ivan was not afraid, all right? He played, he just played d5. He could have played knight f3, right? But then again, the entire purpose of the king's Indian for black is to play e5. Now, if you're a baby, if you're a baby wimp nerd, you take on e5 in the king's Indian, and then you trade the queens. Like, that's what you do. This is how you try to make a draw. And oftentimes in chess, when you really, 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 really badly want to draw, like, you, you, you fiend for a draw. You might lose. That's just what happens. You try to play it too soft. So, d5. d5. Magnus plays knight to b4, which is crazy, by the way, because I've never seen that. I mean, most people I know play here, and then, uh, and then after f4, knight, the knight, the knight comes here. But in general, the idea here by black is like, you're like waving a flag in front of a bull. All right, you're just like, come on, come get me. Like, let's go. Right, so a3, right? And now, you know, again, if he just keeps going, suddenly that knight is really soft. So something like knight g4 could be possible. If you take the knight, bishop c3 is very bad for white. Not losing, because this is weak. But bishop d3 played by Ivan, who now spends 11 minutes, uh, rather 9 minutes to develop a bishop. The Magnus effect, right? Again, we don't know exactly what to do. He plays bishop d3. Magnus plays knight c5. That was always the move that he was going to play. Now... Already, this is, even this is provocative, because white could actually get the entire center. Like, when I say the entire center, I am not exaggerating. Look how awful that looks. But Magnus wants this. You understand? Magnus wants his opponent on edge. He wants his opponent in a complex position. Magnus wants to create these imbalances. He wants to strike at the center from various angles. Because he's the best chess player on the planet and maybe in history. Right? So, like, the odds of him navigating these complexities are higher. The chance of him ducking under a punch and landing an uppercut, or a body jab, or a hook to the head, or a kick, or a clinch, and then a takedown, right? Like, this dude is like the Demetrius Johnson, okay? Of Chad. Like, his skills are ubiquitous, with a capital Q. Bishop C2 back instead, All right? So, instead of getting into all of this, Ivan just says, let's go here, and now I would love to play B4. Magnus says, okay, play b4. I mean, normally you would get a5, but uh, he, he just, okay, play b4. Like, this is, look at this, look at these horse, horse dances. Like, I don't even know, I don't even know what's happening here. That knight went c6, b4, a6, c5, f6, d7. 
This dude has spent six of his first 10 moves moving his horses. He likes horses way too much. Knight e2, now he plays a5, castles, knight to b6 by Magnus, and just pawn to b3. Now Magnus plays e5. e5 is the traditional King's Indian move. All right, he was no longer trying to play c6, he plays e5. And at this point, we pause and we say, 13 moves have been made, who has a better position? White. By a lot or by a little? I know it says 0 0.4, but what does that really mean? White has a slight advantage in this position because the kings are equally safe. Material is equal. However, white has slightly better piece placement, slightly more active pieces, and better future prospects. So because white has a little bit more space, right, he is able to kind of mobilize faster. Also, black hasn't moved the bishop. Black's knights have spent like 87 moves moving. And white is going to try to play where he has more space. Another thing to consider is another pawn break, which is the F pawn break, which is very thematic in the King's Indian defense. So these are the intricacies of the position, but now let's actually get into the specifics, rook to b1. Seven minutes spent to slide a rook to b1. This is why chess will never end up on television, because even golf, which to me is 30,000 times infinitely more boring than chess, has millions of dollars, main, you know, main channel sponsorships and television time. You know, because maybe, maybe it's because they hit a ball with a gigantic metal club, you know? Maybe people fantasize about hitting each other in the head with the giant metal club instead. Like, seven minutes on, oh dear, oh dear, there goes Ivan. He's played rook to b1. He's getting the bishop off the diagonal of the rook as well as the rook in the corner, and he's, he's looking at b4. Crikey. Couldn't decide if I was going British or Australian, so I just decided to insult both of them separately. Now Magnus moves the knight again, by the way. Because this was the idea, right? And now this move is a lot less powerful. It's a lot less powerful because, you know, again, if you got this, you would be very happy. Uh, but uh, first, you might want to defend this pawn. But by moving out of the way, now the move b4 just loses a pawn, right? So that would just be bad. So bishop d3 to defend the pawn. He's trying to play b4. Magnus goes back. And they repeat. They repeat moves. So, if Magnus wants a draw, he's going to play knight c5. Actually, in fact, it is a draw if Magnus plays knight c5. Why is it a draw? Uh, because bishop d3 was played... Uh, so, that's one, right? That's, so, this position just occurred once. That's twice. And Magnus says no, right? So, had he gone back, this would have been a three-move repetition and a draw. Instead, Magnus plays f5, and there it is, the expansion on the king side and Magnus is playing for a win, okay? Now, in the King's Indian, the game is very simple. Black tries to checkmate white, and white basically tries to say, you're stupid, you have no idea how to play chess, and I'm going to attack you on the queen side, which I have to tell you, white is really set up to do. Now, Magnus understands he, he probably has to play for a win. Like, first of all, he's playing a team championship. He's board one by 300 points. Like, he's got to win. F3. Now, again, traditionally, F4, G5. And basically, after a little while, you know, black gets this. And that's, that's very scary. And then queen g5, and then knight f6, and then, you know, these knights are usually, these knights are usually, like, over here, and you get the rook involved. Here's the thing, though. If you do play this, and then you play g5, white's attack is way faster. Way, way faster. Way, the knight is trapped. Like, take, 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 the knight is trapped. I mean, you know, again, you can open my king. <laughs> But the knight is trapped. I mean, you're going to check me, and then, and then you're going to get mated. So you got to be careful what you do over here, which is why f3. And now Magnus goes back to c5. And again, Ivan could play bishop c2. He probably could just go back. He could probably just repeat moves. But instead, knight c5 arrives. And Ivan's like, you know what? I, I'm going to go b4. And the reason he plays b4 now is because white did everything he was supposed to do. Ivan's just playing good principle chess. He's playing exactly the way you're supposed to play in the King's Indian. You're supposed to take more center space. When black plays f5, you meet it with f3 and try to slide the bishop back, and you try to play on the queen side. And you don't worry about losing this bishop. Why is white not concerned about getting this bishop captured? Usually a bishop is worth more than a knight. But white has one, two, three, four, five, six pawns on light squares already. So the light squared bishop is replaceable and you won't have light squared weaknesses. But furthermore, that knight has moved so many times. I mean, if you literally track that knight, it moved once, twice, three times, four times, then 
five times. Here we repeated. So six times. And now seven. It moves seven times. And now it's gone. So seven out of the 19 moves. Now it's just gone. He's made like 40% of his moves with it. It doesn't even exist anymore. And the game is very simple. White is just going to go here. That's what white is going to do. Magnus plays knight d7. Ivan plays c5. And for the second time in a row, this young man is just doing great against Magnus despite being outrated by 300 plus points. It's really like incredible stuff. Um, and the last game, you know, he was kind of getting smushed. Okay? He was getting smushed. You know, Magnus was trying to advance and, and Ivan kind of had to hold him off, hold him off, hold him off, play defense, trade pieces until he struck back. Ivan is really, really good at like maximizing the effectiveness of every piece and then striking back. And there it is. And I got to tell you, Ivan's not playing not to lose this game. He was playing not to lose the other game that I showed you. Uh, dude's just straight up playing to beat Magnus. Like, if I was playing black against Ivan here, he would be sitting here going, I'm going to cook this moron. I don't know if that's what he thinks when he plays Magnus. I don't know if he plays c5 and goes, I'm going to cook this moron. You know, I would imagine he has slightly more respect than that. But if he was playing me again, oh, you best believe he's going, I'm, I'm getting c5, I'm, I'm going to get in a Gotham recap video. That's like, white is just playing this position for a win. I mean, seriously. Uh, and, uh, you know, black here has this practical decision to make of whether to take or not. And I, I watched Hikaru's analysis of this game. He really did not like this move. He really did not like that White now can trade the Rook and infiltrate along the A-file. He actually thought Magnus should have kept the door shut here. Should have probably played something like, you know, let's say, I don't know, like a Knight F6. But in general, if the position ever locks, this Rook is blocked. You know, White can do all of this, but at some point, White can't actually get in. So if White creates... Total gridlock, right? Like this. You know who's going to win this game? It's going to be black. Does that make sense? Because black's not created gridlock. If, if, now, if black does this, it's total gridlock. But black will play g4 and try to crash through. So white needs to do this in a very smart way. And Hikaru really did not like this decision by Magnus to trade rooks. I don't have the amount of experience in practical terms of playing the King's Indian defense because, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust the experts on this one. Magnus now has to deal with this rook trade and an infiltration along the 8th rank. So, Black will not be able to fulfill his destiny and his game plan of creating an attack if there's just an entrance into his territory from the other side. If you would like to successfully attack somebody like this, you need to make sure the exit, there, 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 it's a seal on the other side. You also need to make sure the center is locked. So if you'd like to attack somebody in chess, the center has to be locked, ideally, right? So a b4, a b4, knight f6, and Ivan just plays rook a1. His position just plays itself. He doesn't need to rush. Now, he also could consider c6 at some point. It's a very important move and a very difficult position for Magnus to deal with. And the point of the move c6 is the fact that after, let's say, b6, let's say I, I want to lock the position, now this becomes a lot stronger. And it's actually very tough for black to move. For example, if black continues with the attack, I'll play rook a8, and you will never move. You will never move. You try to attack, I'll play knight b5. You will never move. I have the whole side locked down, and guess what? Then I'm going here, and I'm going here, and I'm taking. And I'm going to sack, and my pawn is going to promote. You can't do anything. This is a fake attack. Second you go here, boom! Now I'm hitting you from all three sides of the board. Down the middle, on the king side, right? Can't draw arrows, but point stands. So, c6, if you take, then I've still got the pawns. So you'll play bishop e6, I will play b5. You'll try to strike back, and here, on deep thought, the computer gives a massive advantage to white. Massive after something like b6. You can sacrifice this, but the pawn gets to b7, and black can't defend against that. So, for example, here, takes on c3, takes, let's say takes, and you just take and go bishop a7, and black is completely defenseless completely defenseless. Look at the evaluation. It's only going to get higher. So Ivan here had to play c6 and just go. He just had to go. And it's crazy because literally he is winning. Like he's, if he finds this idea to just push the pawns forward and completely just not worry about anything else, not worry about the counterplay, right? Then he wins. That's very hard to do because in this position, you give black everything he wants, everything he wants. 
And you have to be very careful because if, if well, that would, again, if you do this, you won't have as big of an advantage. Ivan does it this way. He plays rook a1. Now, Magnus changes gears. Magnus here realizes the situation is kind of dire. And I can't just trade and attack. I can't just do this. Because I'm too slow. My attack's too slow. He's going to play rook a8. If I go unpinning, he's going to go here. And if I play h5 and try to play g4, he's going to play here. And by the time I play g4, he can take, take, and play c6. Too slow. Take, take. It's the pawns. It's the pawns. It's the pawns. Knight c3, knight c5. Bishop h4, take. Trade the queens. Win the endgame because you have two. Magnus's time is running out. But like all great players, Magnus now plays this. He completely changes gears. The entire game I have been showing you, you got to lock the center. you got to go checkmate the opponent. At this point, Magnus realizes, I'm not the one calling the shots in this position. So he takes on e4. And Ivan here could, instead of taking like this, take with the knight. He could actually do this. And then his plan after this, let's say this trade and something like bishop f5, would be to play something, a knight to g3 or c3, like, like, like this, and just keep advancing. Now, Ivan, after f4, plays f4. Very natural move. Very natural recapture, preventing the bishop or the knight from moving anywhere. Maybe g4 in the future, g4, g5, knight g3. But now rook takes, rook takes, and knight h5. And this was not possible with a knight on e4. You might say, why was this not possible? He would just move the knight out of the way. The point is, there's no open f file. There's no nothing here. So white can just play rook a7. White can just keep going on that side of the board. All black has is like knight f4. In the game, there is the knight h5 idea. You trade and then you play knight h5. Because now the knight is arriving here, it's a totally different story. And the rook is open, right? And the queen is coming to h4. With the knight here and the pawn here, the position was more sealed. If you play rook a7 now, I play queen h4. <laughs> you play knight b5, uh, black still can win, all right? G takes, queen h, like this is mate. You can stop that, but I'll go here and this is mate. Look how quickly, right? How quickly it can all happen. So that one trade opens up an avenue of counterplay and Magnus, he, he finds it. And so now dealing with this incoming assault, Ivan has to play Rook here. And you'll notice he spent eight minutes. I actually think the threat of all of this was maybe slightly underestimated. I think Ivan was still trying to win. I don't think he was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trade all the pieces with Magnus. It was probably a good escape plan. It was a good backup plan to have, but actually knight takes e4 was, was, was even stronger and prevented a lot of that. And then again, then you can take with the pawn. Well, first let, you know, again, let's say rook takes, rook takes, knight takes, then you can take with the pawn. Then you can take with the pawn. And then, again, black doesn't have, there's no attack. No attack here. Then this is a very different story because the knights got traded and white can still try to advance over here and create some problems, but rook f1, takes, takes, queen f6. Magnus plays knight f4 and uh, Yvonne just takes. Magnus now has the option to take with the pawn or with the queen. Yvonne's still going for some stuff, still beating up that bad structure. Magnus gives a check. Yvonne bravely walks his king forward. Another check, and he bravely walks his king forward to f3. Magnus plays g5. Wow. Not, probably this is what, you know, white was expecting, and then there would have been some crazy tactics. Instead, g5. So the king can't take h5, g4 looking. But now c takes d6. Now h5 played by Magnus. Oh my goodness. Knight c7, dc, but then there's g4. You can take the pawn. This leads to an unstoppable checkmate. Queen e5, king h4, queen f6, and then mate. Magnus still so dangerous, right? From the most from the most random of positions. The most inconspicuous position ever. It just looked like we were gonna trade some pieces. And now Ivan takes on d6. Seven minutes of thought, seven minutes of thought. Definitely a big nervous situation. And he finds the only move. Ivan finds the only move, bishop d4. Hitting both pieces, 
threatening to trade into an endgame. And Black's only choice is to play pawn to g4 check and allow the king to come forward. A moment ago, the king would have been swarmed by the queen and the bishop. But because of this very important defensive resource, bishop d4 found with seven minutes on the clock, he walks his king, and his king is getting swarmed by threats, all these different threats around bishop h6. Ivan once again finds the best and only move to take the bishop. Now this pawn is very close to queening, but if you take queen f2, and it's never too late to get mated and embarrassed. So instead of that, Ivan plays once again the best move, e5. And the idea of e5 is that queen f2, he can go here, and this is no longer mate, and he's winning. What a move, e5. Magnus plays king h6, trying to take away the escapes where he could have given a check, could have given a check, but then there would have been this, and then there would have been this, and would... But instead of that, he plays king h6, setting up one last trick. And Ivan plays queen e3. Actually, knight d4 by the computer was liked as well. But Magnus was playing on his opponent's low time. He thinks for a while. He plays king to h6. Queen e3. And now anywhere white's king moves, it's going to be check. If this, you'll slide that way. So Magnus takes back the pawn finally. Knight takes d6. And he just says, you know what? I take the pawn. Two pawns each. Knight versus bishop. Knight e4. King g6. Queen b6 check. Magnus goes here. Ivan takes. And they agree to a draw. Ivan takes the queen and offers a draw. Here, here. And I think, I mean, there's a lot of ways to draw this. The reason that they don't play this on is because the next move would be knight c3, followed by b5. If black plays bishop to d7, white will play knight e4. Black can play h4. I mean, this game could have gone a little bit longer, but there's no point. Knight c5, and you just dance around. And if this pawn ever makes it, let's say, to, to h3, I go here, king f5, there's a fork. So they could have played this for another 50 moves, but a demonstration of respect by Magnus says, you know what, I'm not even going to uh, just let's make the draw. Ivan Skitsko. What a beast. 2503, 2509, 15 months apart. I have a theory. Ivan Skitsko is the only 2500 rated Grandmaster to draw Magnus in his first two games against him. I would love a chess statistician or historian in the chat to find the answer to that and see if that's accurate. Because Magnus has played 2500s when he was younger, but like in his current form. Has a 2,500 rated player not lost to Magnus in their first two encounters? Two draws. We found him, boys and girls. And I don't know when they're going to play again, but this man does not lose to Magnus. And he plays him on equal grounds. So, incredible stuff uh, from Ivan. And we, uh, we wish him, uh, well, I wish him nothing but the best. And I wish Magnus nothing but the best either. But it's always fun to see when, he, when, when somebody can rival him in ability. That's all I have for you today. Uh, if you are watching this on November the 16th, I will be in London on the 18th and the 21st. Link in the description. Tickets are almost sold out. So make sure to check those out. And that's all I've got for you today. Get out of here.